Hey, it's Charles back again, and this time we're starting a pretty long series. Um, I've got this model here that my uh, father started building in 1955, and uh, needless to say it was never finished. And it's been sitting in my room for the last 15 years, and I really wanted to get some life back out of it. And um, we got a lot of RC stuff just sitting around in sort of previously failed projects, and I thought it would be really good to, to bring it back to life, maybe have a little go at it, and learn something about RC stuff as we go along. As you can see, it's all pretty uh, pretty damaged and beaten up. There's a lot of damage along here. The whole window section's gone. A lot of the roof panels have come away. I've had to start gluing them back up. Uh, but that's all pretty superficial work. Um, the hole looks to be still more or less watertight. There's some cracking on the lacquer. And I managed to find, amazingly, a pair of plans, uh, a set of plans still, still extant. Um, so all we've got to do really is clean it back up again. Um, I'll try and refinish it with some varnish and stuff. And then it's just a simply a matter of hooking up the relevant parts of uh, the two rudders and the two motor shafts. And the plan for those is to install um, an outrunner motor with a gear or a pulley system to run these two and um, just some servos onto those. So it'll be... A fairly simple fix up, I'm hoping, but uh, a fair amount of work nonetheless. Okay, so first job I'm going to do is make the rudder arms in this picture, uh, and you can see the basic arrangement of how that's all going to work out. So uh, I'll jump over to some uh, build footage. Okay, so here we go. Got a piece of uh, square steel stock, pretty rusty, so I've just given it a little belt sand there. Now I'm going to cut it off into um, just over 30mm lengths and drill. Okay, so we're going to start by facing off the two ends. And then we're just going to face off the sides, and uh, here I notice that the piece is moving. Um, so now I'm just taking. Uh, taking facing cuts off with the end mill. Uh, later I decided that taking sort of thin sideways cuts was a better idea for taking lots of material off with this mill. I'm just going to peck the holes and uh, drop in a 3.3mm bit. And then a 2.5mm bit for an M3 hole, which will attach to the sort of joiner plate. And now I'm drilling a 2.5mm bit for an M3 tapped hole uh, that will be tapped halfway and 3.1mm the other way, uh, so that when we cut the piece in half, um, the two sides will clamp together nicely. Okay, so it's just a quick clean up up with a file, get some uh, rid of some of those burrs. And here we're just cutting the slot in the top so that the uh, rudder post can be squeezed. Okay, so first job was to uh, make the rudder posts, um, and so uh, basically on the milling machine I, uh, I made this little piece of steel. Uh, you've got the hole for the rudder post there, you've got the hole for the, the rudder joiner plates because you've got uh, two parallel uh, rudders. And so uh, basically I'm, I'm using a half drilled through with a 3.1mm, half tapped with M3 uh, hole here, and this cut going all the way through, which means that when we put in a screw uh, we can tighten it onto the rudder post. And this is a much better system than a set screw because set screws can graunch and you generally don't get very good grip, but with this system uh, you get a very good grip without much force on the adjustment screw, so that tightens up onto the rudder post nicely. And it's just M3 tapped, uh, just onto the joiner plate. And I think for the joiner plate, I'm going to 3D print that because uh, I'm not quite sure how the design's going to go, and it's quite a big piece, um, and it's just suitable for 3D printing. I uh, haven't done any for a while. So we put the rudder block onto the rudder post, 
just slides on and making sure that the rudders are aligned with the post just tighten down this hex bolt tight and well the rudders moving with it you might be unable to see that the rudder is moving with the post uh, and so we just need to make another one of these and uh, make the joining piece and I, I think I'm going to make the joining piece on a 3D printer because um, I'm not entirely sure um, about the slot in the middle and things as of yet um, so we'll see how that goes okay so I just printed out um, a little joiner here the the joining arm and um, you can see I made a second one of those so uh, basically we're all ready to go we just need to add the servo and put a little pin on the arm and uh, and uh, make a mounting for the servo is the sort of the biggest job um, and then move on to the rest of it and that's all for that video so if you enjoyed it please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe